What's going on everybody? This is Darian. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you're new here. Hit the subscribe button if you're not new and you just keep watching videos. If you watch three videos and you're not subscribed, strike three, you're out. You should subscribe. Either way, I want to talk about some things that's been going on for the past couple weeks as far as I, uh, I have going on. I've got a lot of issues right now with family issues, um, the emergencies that popped up during the holiday season, so I've been busy doing that. But I wanted to talk about what I've been doing as far as for this channel. So, uh, just this past weekend, I ended up using this right here. So this is the 5D tactical jig. A lot of people know about it. Um, I've recommended it. I've had two or three videos struck down by YouTube. I don't know why they would strike them down. They said I was showing people how to make firearms. Nope. Well, either way, I'm not showing people how to make firearms. I'm showing people what I used to make a firearm. There are videos all over YouTube that show the exact same crap I did that's been up for years, but my video got deleted. Um, and I believe I was shadow banned from there. Um, either way, um, so either way, I want to talk about this 5D tactical jig. So this thing can do AR5s, I'm sorry, AR15s, AR9s, and AR10s, or DPMS LR308 pattern um, lowers. I have three before me now that I did all within the last month. One of them I did yesterday, which is this. So this right here is in DPMS 308. Uh, lower and I absolutely love this lower um, it is raw you could buy it anodized already doesn't have any serialization on it if you can't see it's probably too bright but um really really good lower really good lower and this thing only cost me 55 bucks maybe 60 I think it was 55 bucks total for this and a lot of people will pay hundreds for a lower receiver. And that's fine. If you like that company, go ahead. But there's a lot of money left on the table where you should be investing into your barrel, your bolt carrier, your optic, your trigger, your buffer system, your uh, adjustable gas block or whatever gas block you have, your muzzle device. The list goes on. But I, wouldn't sco I would not skimp out on parts when it comes to anything along the bore access of a firearm. That is the barrel, gas system, bolt carrier, trigger, and buffer system. How those all work together. Um, pretty much most of the moving parts. If it's a stationary part, like a handguard or a grip, so what? Pay for whatever it is you want. That looks cool. Um, but all of the moving parts are parts that have to do with that bullet flying down range and hitting what it's supposed to. That's that. You could use that money for optics, but that's almost an entirely different category. You can have the best firearm in the world. If you can't see what you're hitting, it doesn't matter. That's a hit. <laughs> so optics is a whole nother video, but this right here is specifically just to kind of show you. Um, so right here is, if you can tell, it's a Glock type magazine. So this is an AR9, same trigger pocket as an AR15 which I have right here that's been done. So these two have the same trigger pocket as well. And then of course, as I stated, this AR-10 or DPMS pattern has the same one. The trigger pocket and all three of them are identical. They can all take the same trigger uh, type group. I can do, and I have done all three of those on my jig. I, I'm telling you guys that because the list is endless. Now, these aren't the only semi-automatic type firearms you can make, but the pattern is the same. So the AR-15, everybody thinks instantly 5.56. And while that is the most common uh, caliber, 223 Remington 5.56 NATO, it's not the only one. Nope. I have 300 Blackout AR-15s as well. And that's, that's kind of my point of, you can do so much with this one jig and you know, I can do nine millimeters I, or 40, 45, whatever, doesn't really matter. It's the same sort of thing. This is just called an AR-9, but any of your handgun calibers you can do with this jig. You can do any of the AR-15 platforms, 6.5 Grendel, 300 Blackout, AK-47 rounds, 7.62 by 39, 5.56 of course, um, a few others that I'm not gonna name because they're not on top of my head. Um, obviously, seven millimeter arc or six millimeter arc, whichever it is, 6.5 Creedmoor, 308, um, all of those on this one right here. So, and I've built plenty for myself that I have. And I want to say the reason why I get certain parts cheaper is not because it's a cheap part. It's cheap to buy. Um, Holosun at some point was cheap and everybody was crapping on Holosun. It's a cheap optic. It's cheap. It's cheap. And it was starting to outperform the optics that cost two and three times as much. 
with some real data to back it up, not just, okay, you buy it and it works well for the first month. I'm talking about people who've had that optic for years. I think they've been out since 2013 or something close to that. And they're still going strong. And not only that, their optics are getting better. They have better reticle systems. They have more uh, technology in the shake awake feature. Um, it's just, it's a good optic. Who cares where it's made? If it's good, it's good. I've been to China and I've been to all over the United States. I've eaten Chinese food all over the United States and I've eaten it in China too. Guess where it's better at? In China. It doesn't mean that they make bad stuff. I understand that we are not exactly allies with China and therefore people want to see American made products and there's nothing wrong with that at all. I support American businesses, blah, blah, blah. But I'm going to tell you this right now. There is something also called American greed and that is our downfall. So people who are greedy, who want to sell you something that doesn't cost that much, this right here, identical lower to some companies that bought the same lower I did, drilled it out as I did, laser engraved the city and state they did it in, put a serial number, put caliber multi, all that other stuff, and then they sell it to you for four times as much as I bought this or more. Um, I don't think that's worth it. I don't care whose company name is on the side of it. It is not worth it to me. Nope. So I put my money in other things like my trigger, like my bolt carrier, the barrel, stuff that I think matters for the end result, which is shooting the gun. Nobody cares where you bought your gun. Nope. Um, well, they might care on the internet. There's a couple groups that, you know, will, will crap on your whatever you bought because it's not what they have. And that's fine. Those dudes literally are boring, right, in life. I don't even care about that. They, they don't even bother me one bit. Um, so either way, I wanted to talk about that and tell you about some parts. So I went shooting last night, um, and by night, I literally mean at nighttime, night vision goggles, um, you know, IR lasers, illuminators, all that other stuff. And I was doing some stuff with some friends. It was pretty fun, shooting some steel, shooting paper. But um, if you have the opportunity to go shoot at night, please by all means do so. It will only make you a better shooter. Um, it's really fast doing drills in the daytime, even if you're not looking during reloads for your rifle or your handgun. But once you do it at night and you're on nods of some sort, it does change things quite a bit, whether you need to look at it or not, because you're still, you're still getting so much feedback visually, um, whether it's depth perception and stuff like that, that you, you it'll, it'll mess with you. Um, but I want to talk to you about this. So this, like I said right here, this lower receiver is going to be paired up with this handguard and this upper receiver. Um, I love this upper receiver and this handguard combination. And as I stated the other day, I just hogged this lower out last night. Um, it will all be Cerakoted. It will all be the same color. Don't know which color yet. And if you can tell right here, it does have, um, you know, maybe from this angle, you can see that it's flared out a little bit more right here, then it tapers and gets smooth all the way down back to the, the front where it's pretty much a quad rail at the top uh, with the slant bull nose. So that's the slant. It's not straight. It's got a little bit of a slant on it. Um, I will show you what this looks like on a complete rifle. I like this handguard, honestly, better than the one I'm about to show you. Um, I paid less than $60 for this handguard. What? This is a 15 inch M-Lock compatible handguard um, with QD sling swivel attachments on the top and bottom of this, um, even on the six o'clock position as well, if you can see underneath that. So they're on the nine, the three, and they're also here on the six. Not that I would need anything on the six, but it just is. And if you need to put a bipod or something um, a laser, a light, you don't need an M-Lock compatibility, uh, a little adapter, you can just mount it directly to the rail because I guess they realize some people just like that type of thing. It's not always good either because let's say I want to put a light on it or a laser and I don't want it right there, I want it back further based on my hand grip, well now this thing is actually in the way. So to each their own. But I'm going to show you something that costs over four times as much. I paid 60 bucks for this, maybe less. As a matter of fact, I got the upper receiver and the handguard for $80 shipped to my house. 80 bucks for this handguard, this upper receiver. Um, and then I paid maybe 60 for this. So for all of them, 
for all of them, maybe with taxes and shipping and everything, for all of them, I paid less than 200 bucks. So for this handguard, upper and lower, less than $200 to my house. And some people will say, well, I have, you know, such and such company and right on. They're great. I'm going to show you this identical thing I just showed you, but on a complete firearm that I've had for a few years now. Okay, so before me now is my 308 caliber. Uh, this is on another video. This is Cerakoted and tungsten. Um, so if you can see right here, this is the same exact handguard that I just showed you. Same one with the bull nose, with the slant. It is a 16 inch barrel. So that's what a 16 inch barrel looks like outside of it. Um, it is M-Lock compatible, as I stated. It does have an M-Lock, um, not even an M-Lock, it does have an actual Picatinny bipod. Now I bought this for a different build, but I do realize I did not want this on top or underneath here. It will fit just fine, but whenever I kick the legs back out for storage purposes and put it in a, in a safe or put it in uh, a case, I did not want the legs to extend past the muzzle device. So that's why I don't put this at the very front of where it's at. Now for other optics and other, uh, I'm sorry, not optics, other bipods like my um, Atlas bipod, you can put it here and kick the legs back if you want. You can't kick the legs back on this one. You can only kick them forward. If I was to put it backwards, then it would just be backwards and I wouldn't be able to load the bipod as, as well as I do with this. Um, once again, the M-Lock compatibility is great. It's not anything loose. It's just a, a machine, right? That cuts all these things out. Even the cutie sling swivel part I was telling you about right here, great. I've had no issues with that. I've actually had issues with some of the ones that are more expensive. Um, but like I said, I've had this for years and I absolutely love this. This is probably one of my favorite guns to go shoot. Um, it does have a primary arms uh, scope on it. And you know, the Radian Raptor charging handle, a lot of Magpul furniture, the K2 Plus grip, the, the UBR stock and other things like that. But uh, I absolutely love this firearm and I got to save so much money. So as I stated, this is it right here. I'm gonna try to just show you, this is the same thing, exact same thing, right? Part for part. This is the exact same upper, exact same lower. Um, now I just gotta put some guts in it. This one is also gonna be a 6.5 Creedmoor with an 18 inch barrel with some different features that are no longer not no longer, but that aren't on this one I'm gonna show you. So either way, I love this gun. Love it, love it, love it. So when my buddies were asking me, how come this gun costs more than that one? I'm like, it's just the, who made it. Some things are actually in quality control. Some are in warranty. This magazine's empty, by the way. Um, but I'll also say this too, so you can't see it, it's empty. The actual magazine, I put it in for a reason. I can put, an ambidextrous mag release on this um, right here, but I cannot on my other one and I'll show you why. Um, now there's nothing wrong with this, but I'm going to mill out this other lower that I just did the other day or yesterday. I'm gonna do something different to this that I did not do to this. I am going to do something I'm gonna show you right now. So this is my current 6.5 Creedmoor. This is also a 16 inch barrel. There is no magazine in it. It is empty. It is also got a big old can on the top for now. Let's take that off. So you can probably see it. Very, very similar UBR stock, K2 plus grip, Radian Raptor charging handle, Radian Talon or whatever, 45 degree selector. Um, this one has a Geisley two-stage trigger, the SSAE. I actually have two more of them on the way right now from Primary Arms. Great prices. Um, the same grip right here and the same bipod. This is from Midwest Industries. This is the high profile, so it's a little bit taller than the, like the upper. So if I was to put um, this handguard on this other upper, it wouldn't fit well. There would be a gap. 
this would be taller than the Picatinny on top of the upper receiver. And of course I have a surefire break. Um, ballistic advantage barrel, completely different stuff, but my point is this, this handguard, 15 inch handguard as well, costs 180 on sale. I think it's like 209 from Midwest Industries. Now I love their lockup system. I love everything about it. I probably have four or five Midwest Industries rails. Now, nothing against them. I will continue to, to tell you that they have great products. I'm just telling you right now, there's other products out there that cost a fourth, 20, 25% of what these cost. So you can save money and get a handguard like this, a receiver like this. Um, you know what I mean? That, that does the same thing. Now, one thing I will say about the quad rail on the end of uh, this handguard with the blunt nose or the stub nose is I can't put, and, and also on the rear, the rear as well, it has that like, you know, Cobra hood on the sides. I can't put an M-lock adapter like this right here. If you can see right here, I have an Arca Swiss M-lock adapter for tripods. I cannot put that on here where I want my, um, it would be in the way of where I want my, uh, this, my forward grip. Now, not every gun needs a forward grip. Most, if not all of mine have one, if I can put one on it. I know some people will swear by not putting it on there in case they're shooting over a car or, you know, they're shooting on something. I think it's great in general. It's just a great thing to have. I see more pros than I see cons with it. And if I had to shoot on top of a car, first of all, I have a bipod. So that's that. But if I'm actually holding it, if I'm running with this gun, I think when I have ran with firearms before I've ran with them in the day, I've ran with them at night. I like to have a grip, something to literally grab a hold of in my actual running um, while I'm running. I don't want to just hold on to the handguard. This is not your normal AR-15. This is much heavier. Um, but what I was going to try and tell you too is this. So this gun is ambidextrous. It's on another video. So I, I actually had to file out a PDQ. Pretty damn quick is what it stands for. I had to file this out. This, because it is filed out, it makes it almost impossible to have an ambidextrous magazine release the way this one is set up on this lower. So I'm going to buy another one for this lower. I'm going to mill it out as well, but I might have to be putting on a different mag release. So while this gun is ambidextrous, it is only for the bolt catch slash bolt release. A lot of people think that's the same thing and it's not. Nope. There are plenty of guns out there right now that are only bolt release on the right side and not bolt catch. So I can actually pull that back and lock my bolt to the rear and also drop it from the rear. So I can do that and I can do that. Um, and you might say, when do you ever have to lock the bolt to the rear? Stoppages. Clearing stoppages is probably one of the biggest things I can say um, I've had to use that. Even during training courses that I've gone through as a former service member um, and stuff like that. You have to be able to lock that bolt to the rear. Strip it, lock it, clear it, reload the gun, and shoot. That was what we were teaching. Well, if you had to sit there and take your hand off of the grip and off that and, and then snake bite the actual... Uh, charging handle and then use the ping pong paddle with your left thumb or something like that that's fine if you could do that quick however there are easier ways to do it and this is much bigger than an AR-15 and I can just lock that bolt to the rear strip it if I need to reload the gun and shoot and I think that is so much better um, than firearms that don't have that I was looking up uh, lower receivers that already are ambidextrous, 80% lowers that are ambidextrous, and they all were bolt release only, not bolt catch. So when it comes to the bolt catch, bolt release, that's not the biggest deal when you're building a rifle, but at the same time, it's a big deal on how you train with it. Um, yeah, so I mentioned, so this camera tripod right here is for my big, like expensive, you know, few thousand dollar Nikon setup but it, it does have Arca Swiss plates. You won't be able to see it that well, but if you were a hunter or you were a, you know, spotter, not spotter, sniper, or somebody who needs, you know, a stable platform, 
even if you're zeroing your gun, this is actually a really good setup to have. And that's it. So I can just leave it like that and actually swivel it around. Um, try and you know, hold it a little bit lower. But this is what it would actually look like on a tripod. Right? And uh, I've got a couple different setups for this. And I'll go ahead and take that off for right now. But that's that. So that's a really, really quick thing. I wanted to tell people this because I want people to get most bang for their buck when it comes to building. And uh, I got all of these parts right here that I'm telling you right now at Delta Team Tactical. I think I bought this lower at righttobear.com. They did have some Black Friday sales. They have Cyber Monday sales. I bought these months ago. But um, yeah, actually, let me put this back down. And uh, yeah, um, on top of this right here too is an Arc and Optics scope. I have plenty of scopes. I have scopes from some expensive companies, very expensive companies to me. To me, um, and I will keep them, but I will never buy another one of them. At least not until their price point matches the quality that they give. I don't care what your warranty is. Everyone almost offers a lifetime warranty now. You can get a lifetime warranty on a pair of socks, for all I know. So that's that's out of the window for me. But this scope right here is absolutely amazing. Um, I've taken this firearm out to 750 yards. I know it can go much further, but I was accurate as heck with this and tracking as well. Um, I love it. Now, I'm not going to say this scope can never give somebody problems like other scopes and if it's something that they can throw out of a helicopter and beat it and drop it and see if it still holds zero. It may, it may not. I'm not about to test my firearm like that. Nope. Show me a link where someone does. This is an arc in optics. I know uh, Taboris, Taborsaurus, Rex Taborsaurus, whatever. He made a video about arc in optics being the cheapest out of the lineup and the best scope overall that he had. Now I've had these scopes for a couple years myself. I have three of them. One of them here on the 6.5 Creedmoor. The other one here on my Remington 700 and my Kadex sniper chassis. Um, I absolutely love this thing. Um, someone th thought this was a mid-level sniper system and they prefer the M110, which is a semi-automatic sniper system. I get it. But I also decided the other day, Amazon had the craziest sale I've ever seen. They had that same scope for 225 bucks. What? Here it is, people. $225 for this scope. Now, earlier when I had bought this scope, or before I even bought it, I had already had a spare American Defense mount, 34 millimeter mount. I think this is also a 20 MOA cant. Um, so I already had the scope mount, and this was over 140, 180 bucks or something close to it. Um, because it's obviously got these cantilevers on the side. It's easy, quick uh, dismount from the upper. And I decided to buy another scope. I already had a mount for it, so might as well get a scope. So I'll show you what it looks like. Obviously it comes in this cool guy box. I threw all of them in the trash. Um, this is the only one I'm keeping, just for the purposes in case you haven't seen it. Very well packaged. If you don't know about this company, it's started by somebody, I believe, who was a prior SEAL. And he wanted to put the optics that he used in the field, that level of quality, in the hands of a normal consumer. And if you don't know, Navy SEALs primarily, if not exclusively, use Night Force scopes. Um, and most of those scopes are second focal plane, which is a great option. However, I learned on first focal plane scopes, I do not own a second focal plane scope out of probably all of my scopes that are 5.56 five, and up. If they're little 22 caliber ones, I don't care what they are because I'm only plinking and having fun with that. But anything that's 5.56 five, and up has a first focal plane optic. And this is another one that I have, so I'll go ahead and take it out. Um, it came with some stickers some paperwork, it even came with a battery, a 2032 battery that you can put in the side for the illumination. 
It comes with the bikini already on it. It is very well packaged. I know some people could care less about that, but it is a big deal to me on how you send something that is meant to save your life uh, out. So clearly this gun, oof, this is the lens hood. I don't almost, I never, I never use lens hoods. Um, now nothing against it, I just don't use them. Uh, so yeah, that's that. Here's the scope. It, and guess what it says? That's going to piss a lot of people off. Made in China. Um, I don't care if it was made on the moon. This is a badass scope. And I just want to tell everybody right now, I don't see, I think it is Japanese glass, but it may, it may be made in China. And that is the thing about it. Like I said, there's some, there's sometimes American greed involved in these companies. And yeah, that's that. It, ha it has the best uh, when it comes to actual like the detents, each one of these are very, very crisp. You can tell if you went one click, not just buzzing through it. You have to mean to do it, but you also can tell when you did it. And so this scope and this mount will be married up very, very shortly. I might even put them on top of this AR-10 AR, uh, that I'm building, or I might do it on a completely different um, mount. Now, I don't know why I would need more than one of the same thing, but at the same time, I would have different rigs for different setups, um, certain competition level things I want to do, certain hunting rigs I want to do. Um, I don't want one firearm that does everything. I feel when you do that, it does okay at everything, but it doesn't do the best at that one thing that you built it for. So keep that in mind when you are building a rifle, if you are going to build a rifle. So I showed you all of those. I showed you um, my 6.5, my 308, my other 308 in the sniper chassis, the Arcan Optics made in China, Japanese glass, probably the best scope I've ever used. I've actually recommended this scope. I know about 15 people who have it as well, um, ever since they saw mine. And they were wondering, how do you get a 34 millimeter tube, first vocal plane at that distance, um, built like that with illuminated reticles for under $400? And honestly, I don't know how you do it, other than stealing it or you buy it from Arcan Optics. So, so yeah, that's my quick video for the day. I'm gonna do some work. I'm gonna probably Cerakote some stuff. No, I'm not, I'm not doing that today. It's raining and I'm not about to open that garage door and do any of that stuff. So maybe next weekend or something I might do that and then I'll show you the footage. But either way, hopefully this helps some of you guys out. If you are in the process of building a firearm, know where to spend money at. The trigger I bought cost more than this. I have triggers from Geisley that cost more than this scope and you would not even know that. So when you're talking about guns and you're looking at someone's firearm, most of the money is not what you see on the outside. It should be spent on the inside. Like I said, anything that moves, triggers, bolts, buffer systems and stuff like that, um, even the gas, gas tubes, gas blocks, anything that's moving on that firearm should be spent. Um, with quality in mind, not name brand. Now some name brands are great, that's why they're name brand, and some of them are just in it for a dollar bill. This is Darian, hopefully you liked the video, give it a like, give it a dislike if you don't like the video, and I'll see you next time. Thanks, peace.